Hello everyone, my name is Flair Blitz and welcome to Torig Secrets, a horror vision novel based around a university called International Galactic University, which we embark on a dark and thorny path to find out answers about our friends, our college administration, and ourselves. And we're also amnesiac as well. So let's see, I would like to save at this very good point in time. The sea, the beach. The sound of waves crashing. I missed it all so much because we don't have any of this back there. Up there at the station, that is. Truth be told, there's nothing interesting up there at all. Looking at this beautiful tranquility, there is a lot to admire about the calmness, the blueness of both the sea and the skies. It's very cyberpunk or whatever it's called. You know, the genre that used to be all the rage back in the day. Hmm, which was once beloved fiction among movie and book fans have now become the new norm, courtesy of the advent of cutting-edge technology. And now taking a break from all that cyberpunk, I feel generally serene walking on sand and listening to seagulls cry in this beautiful place. But, why am I so cold? As in temperature, or just how you respond to people? Interact with people. Of course the temperature here can't hold a candle to that of Antarctica. Nothing in this world can. But it's still uncomfortably chilly despite the sweltering sun that forces me to shield my eyes with my hands. Look, he moved his hand. Did you see that, dear brother? Sure did, sis. Is he finally coming to after such a traumatic accident and so many surgeries? Oh, finally coming to, as in that what surgeries? Who's saying that in the first place? There's no one around. I'm all by myself here. Hold on. Why am I alone? This is a beach after all. Why is it so deserted? Uh, maybe because of a certain theme that happened in the world recently? I'm not too sure. Pretty sure it's supposed to be packed with children horsing around. Lovely duppy cobbles and old people getting their tan on. Why isn't there anyone? Maybe this is a dream. All of a sudden, the sea escape before my eyes began to fade and distort, gradually transforming into darkness. I wasn't afraid. In fact, I didn't feel anything. Nothing here, nothing in my soul. Anything but the regret about leaving this place. It was so tranquil. And now we're going to wake up in the real world. I woke up on a hospital bed with horrible pain in my entire body, feeling like I'd been exposed to a high voltage shock for several days in a row. Two strangers were standing by my bedside, a young man and a girl. He's awake. The girl flung herself on me, wrapping me in a big hug that, hug that threatened to send me back to the realm of my dreams. We were starting to think you would never wake up, so I think this must be mum and dad. The overwhelming embrace sent a wave of painful spasms throughout my body, and I gently pushed away the girl who was crying tears of happiness. Who are you guys? What do you mean? Amnesiac. I guess the doctor was right. You really don't remember anything, huh? Well, in that case, reintroductions are in order. The name is Pluto. Oh, best friend. Okay. The name is Pluto, your best friend. And this here is my sister, Sunny. Something to do with the solar system. Pluto, Sunny. I feel sorry for the person who's going to be called Uranus. Best friend, huh? Why aren't you charging at me tearfully then? Wouldn't worry about me? Nope, I wasn't. I just knew you'd pull through for sure, that's all. Turns out I was right. You not worried? Don't listen to him, Satu. He was on pins and needles the whole time you were unconscious. There goes playing a tough guy. I guess I'm caught in a lie. Pluto smiled an inch closer to my bed. You probably don't even remember why you're here, do you? Yeah, I'm drawing a total blank here. Actually, wait a minute. Flowers. That's right, there was a whole bunch of flowers around me. That's the only recollection I have right now. No wonder, considering you fell out of a uni's botanic garden window. What? <laughs> yes, you totally did. The sound of breaking glass was so loud, everybody around came running to see what's up. Or what's falling down. Then the ambulance and the police arrived. Damn. 
How long was I out for? About a week. Maybe longer. W-E-E-K. That ain't that much, all in all, right? Pluto pulled a small piece of paper out of his pocket and handed it to me. Marcy asked me to give this to you when you will wake up. When you wake up. I didn't read it, I swear. I took the note. I will... I will read the note. I am not one to shy away from notes. I unfolded the letter. I'm so glad you're finally awake. I was worried sick. Please get well soon. Hope you don't forget me. Marcy. That might be a bit difficult. I'm so glad you... Okay, I've already read that. <laughs> Marcy. I was looking at the letter itself and not the actual text below. Marcy, huh? Thanks for well wishes. I wish I could remember you. She's at a different station right now. Didn't have a chance to tag along. Mercury is with her too. Mercury? The very same? You don't remember her as well? Weird question. Coming from friends I don't recognize. Sunny was about to say something got interrupted by the sound of rapidly approaching footsteps. Then a girl entered the room. Wow, our test pilot is awake. Had enough of flying. Better pack a parachute next time. Never expected you to show up here in Nibiria, so that must be a nebula. There's no way I couldn't swing by our kamikaze here, that's just rude. I sometimes think that being polite is on the other end of the spectrum for you. <laughs> I think eager is another word. You'll want to talk right now. Am I friends with this girl too? I don't feel so good suddenly. Hey. Cat got your tunnel along with your memories? I was a fiend up to talking to this person, but I reluctantly conceded. My tunnel's quite fine. You could do without yours, though. <laughs> Pluto and Sunny giggled quietly as Nebiria frowned her brows. Uh, is this rude people club? Fine, you'll be that way. I'm out of here. Nebiria was about to leave the room, but Pluto took her hand in his and gave her a pat on the shoulder with his other one. Hey, come on, we didn't mean it like that. Sorry, we're, we're just a little on edge right now. That's right, please don't be mad, Nibiria. Nibiria sharply turns to face us. Gotcha. <laughs> I wasn't going to leave for reals. You people fell, it, <laughs> fell for it hook, line and sinker. Yeah, right. Listen, how much longer am I supposed to stay here? Now that I'm awake, they've got to discharge me, right? Discharge? Don't be ridiculous. You ought to remain here for a few more days at least. Yes, my brother is right, if you say so. But if I'm not discharged after that, I'm blowing with you, you. That's not your choice. As you wish. You won't listen to us anyway. Pluto shrugged. What a naughty boy. Wish I could punish you. Just kidding. You already punished yourself by getting into the school. Another bad joke added to the pile. Nibiria pretended she didn't catch that. Guys, I just remember something. When are we going to start setting up for prom tonight? Night. Prom night. Interesting thing to bring up at this moment, sis. I suppose we can start as soon as Sato walks out of here. Or crawls out of here. Pluto and Sunny each gave Nibiria a disapproving look. What? Maybe Corny would be safer for him from now on. Tough crowd. Uh, another joke. As the rest continue their lively discussion, I use this opportunity to recap. So what did you do then, huh? What on earth did you... Do not full screen? Oh, for goodness sakes. Uh, it turns out the same... <laughs> the same screenshot hotkey online is also the same key to make it a full screen. Lovely. Never would have thought someone like me could have friends, much less so many. I wonder when we met. In college, or even before that. I should ask them. This Nibiria girl ticks me off a bit though, if I'm being honest. I just gotta get used to her shtick, I guess. Hmm, but what about Mar that Marcy? What's she like? Is she cute? Kind? She bothered to write me a letter, so she must be at least concerned. Oh yeah. Didn't they also mention someone called Mercury? 
I hope those two aren't like Nibiria. But what if they are? But don't say you are the company you keep for nothing. Looking at Sunny and Pluto, it's mind-boggling how they could get along with such an eccentric person. They call dualities. They seem to be like chalk and cheese. Or do opposites actually attract? Yes, opposites do attract. When you have one timid person, you have a very, 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 very highly strong energetic person. If that's the case, perhaps even I could break the ice with Nibiria somehow. Who knows? Satu, what do you think? I'll stop my musings. What do I think of what? Come again? I just kind of spaced out. You really didn't hear a thing we were saying? Nope. In that case, let me reiterate. We're thinking of doing a song for prom, but can't decide on which one. What are the options? How about such a lonely day? There you have it. Do you even know it? Nope. Should I? If that's the song we're doing, you ought to... Makes sense. Listen to it. Seen it. I, refl I reflectively smiled. I'm down. It's kind of old school. Just like our Dean, Mr. Oreo. But he's probably even older. Oh boy. The fact that even Nibiria liked the idea makes this a wrap. Hey, what's that supposed to mean? Why do we keep picking on old poor Nibiria? <laughs> do you really think I'm that haughty? No, it's just that you have a unique outlook is all. I'll take that as a compliment. Unique rings true. Maybe to an excess. I want to take a jab at Nibiria, but suddenly somehow seemed to somehow sense my malicious intentions and interjected. Guys, I think Satu is getting tired of our prattle. Let's give him some space. He shouldn't overexert himself after just waking up from a long or week long coma. Sunny appeared to have realized that me and Nibiria are capable of going after each other forever. And if we continue to hang out, it would inevitably come just to that. She really is smart. Yeah, truth be told, I am a little tired. We understand. We'll give you some alone time then. Get better. We'll stop by tomorrow again. See you tomorrow. Please recover quickly. Yeah, see you around. Hope you don't kick the bucket overnight. I'll try my best not to. Bye guys. Thanks for coming. Pluto and Sunny gave me each a farewell hug. Nibiria merely patted my shoulder and wished me not to die again. Hmm, maybe she's not that bad. Has her own way of saying thank you. My friends exited the room and headed towards an unknown destination, leaving me to recuperate. Leaving me to just swell here. I never got up from my bed after my new friends left. Not because I didn't have the strength, I just didn't feel like it. Where would I go? There's only the bathroom. But considering I haven't had anything much to eat or drink, there is no need to use it. Actually, where am I supposed to go after this? To my dormitory? Or maybe back to Earth? Okay, that puts a new spin on things. Are we on some other planet then? Hell if I know. I'll just take it as it comes, as I usually do. Is that what I usually do? Eh, I'm asking too many questions. It sucks that I can't answer any of them though. But in actuality, answering those questions isn't that important right now. No, it isn't. What I should be asking myself is how I managed to fall out of a window. Did someone push me? In that case, who? Well, this is a horror visual novel, so anything could come to light. Questions that lack answers yet again. Man, I'm sick of this crap. Conventional wisdom tells me I should just go to sleep. If I can actually fall asleep. Racing through... Racing fours are a... Bleh, but I still should try to get some shut eye. Since I'm getting a headache already. Time to hit the hay. I don't want to be half asleep when the guys come tomorrow. When the people come tomorrow. Same view again. The beach. The sea. The birds. Tranquility is in the air. Beautiful. Perhaps I should have stayed comatized. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want that. I could be here instead, lying on the warm sand alone. Wait, why am I alone again? Ah yes, I'm dreaming. 
This is a dream. In that case, maybe I could control it. Why not? Yes, I should definitely give it a shot. Nothing happened. Nothing at all. Because you've got to put your imagination to it as well. Not just your lucid dreaming abilities. That's okay. I don't mind the way things are. I don't. Or do I actually mind? I don't know. Something sprung to mind suddenly how I felt warm and fuzzy inside when the guys came to visit me. This apparent paradise, however, lacks that kind of warmth. Very interesting. As for Nibiria, even though we didn't necessarily hit it off, we were still chummy enough. We definitely were... what? What? Footsteps. Is that the nurse making her rounds? I thought she was on a different schedule. Strange. I peered towards the doorway. Am I hearing things? The moment I chalked it up my, to my vivid imagination, Sunny suddenly emerged from the dark hallway. And the music does not make it any less intimidating. Hi. Um, what? Did you break into the hostel in the middle of the night? Just wanted to come see you again. Am I not allowed to? Sunny licks her lips and stared at me intently. You are, but it's 2 a.m. So what? People miss each other around the clock, especially at night. I don't like where this is going. Sunny came closer. Are you really here just to see me? Maybe I am. Maybe I'm not. Oh, great. In the blink of an eye, the girl jumped at me from where she was standing. Oh, dearie me. This is a bad situation right now. Uh, hey, 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 what are you doing? I'm seeing you. You don't have to m mount me to see me. Come on. It's not like you have any objections, do you? I do. Our lips are so close, they're almost touching. Just a bit closer and... And what? I'd like to push Shani away from me. I'm sorry, I can't do this. You're probably right. Let's find a more suitable place. No, we cannot do this. Sunny climbed down my bed and walked toward the exit. Catch up. She left the room. Hey, wait up. Where are you going? This whole place is closed up. Now that I think about it, how did she get inside? She couldn't have used a window. This is the fourth floor after all. How did you even know it's the fourth floor? Did she pick the lock? Shivers went down my spine. That's disturbing. What should I do? We're gonna stay in the room. I mean, that is just the most logical thing to do. We're just, we're just gonna stay in here. She's not for real Sunny. I'm not going after her. I'll let the hospital staff handle her. I'm not foolish enough to chase off the girls in the hospital. Especially at night. That sounds like a hentai setup. What could possibly happen to her? The hospital is bustling with people. So she's totally safe. I don't think this kind of behavior is typical of her though. Maybe she's sleepwalking, or mentally ill. I've heard of bipolar disorder, or maybe she's getting something more sinister. Don't know. I cro I, I'm crossed to the, I'm crossed to the door and locked it. I hope I can get some sleep now. I'll ask Pluto and Sunny tomorrow. Maybe she's always been like that. However, my first impression of her was that she was lucid and well mannered. All of this is weird. I went back to bed. I need to rid my brain of all thought. Maybe then I'll be able to fall asleep again. Damn, this is difficult. I'm too stressed about, out about that situation. <laughs> Why in the world would she be out and about the college town at 2 in the morning? She should be more like me, out cold at 10. I heard somewhere that going to bed at that time is good for you. I smile to myself. I guess day is an exception to my routine. That's okay, life goes on. I've had worse things happen to me. Probably. I don't remember. But probably. I closed my eyes and started to count sheep. They say this method is foolproof. I'll give it a shot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You again. I opened my eyes. What? What was it? What the hell? Stretched out all around me was a meadow of night at night. I was just in my hospital room. 
How am I in a place? Uh, how am I in this place now? <laughs> this is beyond insane. I looked around. It's pitch black here, except there are some midnight sceneries. Oh, hello, mister. A small girl came out from behind a tree. Who are you? Are you Sunny, but from childhood age? She looked to be about eight, and she was dressed in old, torn rags. But she looked pretty happy. Hello? If you don't mind me asking, what are you doing in a forest at night? It's dangerous, you know. I'm out for a walk. Don't be afraid, it's not dangerous here at all. Yes, since the creep said the creepy monster. What are you doing here? That question caught me off guard. I can't just tell her, I've no idea how I came to be here. I'm a woodsman. I said the first thing that popped into my head. Wow, I've never seen around you here before. I guess the girl paid no mind to my hospital a tear. She's just a kid. She probably doesn't even know what a woodsman looks like. Even I'm not sure what he's supposed to look like. I can't picture one with a beard and wearing suspenders. But I digress. I should ask her name. Not that I care much. Just to be polite. Maybe she knows what's going on here. However small a chance. Um, it's my first day here. Hey, what's your name? I'm Yuppie. What are you called? The girl's lips curved into a smile. My name's Satu. M nice to meet you, Yappy. I held my hand out to her. Yappy took it with both of her tiny hands and pulled me after her. Okay, Mr. Woodsman, follow me. I'll show you our house. A house? Yes. It's very big and pretty. Maybe she was taking me to some place. People who could help me. So I agreed to follow her. Uh, Alright. Lead the way then. My new acquaintance took off toward the thick trees, me in tow. As we went on, Yappy kept telling me how scenery, scenic it is around here and what a great place it is to live. All the while not letting go of my hand, not even for a second. I've got to give props to this tyke. She seemed to know the forest like the back of her hand. She was confidently navigating through it in almost complete darkness, tugging me behind her assertively. Almost there! Okay, Yuppie. Wait, isn't Yuppie a name of like an ur urban legend or something like that? So I'm thinking about it now, that is probably the case. Yuppie is definitely like a, um, an urban legend. Not a good one. Five minutes later, we finally arrived. We're here! And you have the same sort of slight transparent feeling that um, Sunny did when she arrived at the hospital at 2 in the morning. Yuppie let go of my hand and pointed toward the door. Go ahead, it's open! I prayed for her parents to be normal people. This isn't a nice scenario. I'll ask them how to find my way out and then get out of their hair forever. Okay. But please introduce me to your mum and dad so they don't think I'm breaking and entering or something. Yuppie's face turned dark and mournful. I don't have them. After saying that, she dashed towards the door and disappeared behind it. Hey, please wait! I didn't mean to upset you! I had no choice but to follow the girl. As I thought, this is going to be a bit sinister. The interior looks very dusty. Dilapidated, it, giving the impression that the place has been in uninhabited for 20 years, give or take. There were toys strewn about the floor that looked far from new as well. Yuppie lives here by herself? Can't be. She's probably not an only child. There's too many toys for her alone. There's no such thing as too many toys for one child, for goodness sakes. Yes, most likely she has siblings. But where are they? Having a leisurely stroll out in the woods too? If they are... I'll just wait for them to come back. For now, I should focus on finding Yuppie. I went over the possible places she could be in my head. Where would I hide if I were a little girl? There would be the attic. Great spot. I should get there. Check there. Up in the attic, it was jam-packed with all kinds of junk. Very typical. You could find just about anything up here if you looked hard enough from cutlery to an assortment of different antiques. Evidently, they were pretty well off back in the day. I guess not anymore. I guess not anymore. After searching every nook and cranny of the attic, I found lots of stuff, but no yuppie. I was about to climb down, 
slightly dejected, but I caught a glimpse of something out of the corner of my eye. It was a small blue book decorated elegantly in golden patterns. My curiosity got piqued. The cover was too alluring. I picked up the book and firstly checked the owner's signatures on the first page. Mrs. Muffred, huh? I opened the book to a random page somewhere in the middle. That little blip bit my hand today, but no matter. A few days in the forest with no food will make her fall in line. And if she doesn't come back, no skin off my back. One fewer mouth to feed. Hmm. I wonder whose journal is this? Yuppie's mother? Or the previous person that fell into Yuppie's trap? I really hope not. This woman seems to hate children. I hope I'm misinterpreting it, but if I'm not, this is serious child abuse. I've got to rescue Yuppie from this place. No, Yuppie is the cause of the curse. As soon as possible. I don't trust little girls in horror movies. It's just one of those commonsensical rules is to not trust anyone. Just especially children anyway. So I decided to check the backyard next. She could have slipped there through a window or something. The backyard house, a playground, and a large barn. Everything here looks run down too, and the swings seemed like a threat to anyone who would want to use them. Of course I wouldn't. Being a kid like Yuppie may not realize the danger. She could injure herself. That fiend is a death trap. But since I don't see her here, she's unlikely to swing on it. Solid logic. Nice one, Satu. I tooted my own horn and continued the search. Hmm. I haven't checked the barn yet. I doubt Yuppie's hiding there. But I need to make sure. What if she is in there, crying in a corner? All alone. I strode purposefully towards the barn as I imagined that. I paused a little before entering to come up with what I should say to my little friend if I find her. Okay, I'll just wing it. As always, I went inside. Yuppie wasn't there. Something else was, though. A skeleton? Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, I think that one's going to be greyed out. I saw a blood shitting scene. There was a huge wolf skewered upon several spikes in the middle of the barn. It was missing chunks of flesh in some spots. It still inhabited feeble signs of life. However, its body twitched occasionally, convulsing, and its paws were slightly shaking. The animal wasn't howling. The poor guy apparently just didn't have the strength. He just wistfully stared into space, waiting for the suffering to end. But the relief wasn't coming. As if someone or something was preventing it from dying. It's a curse, I tell you. Unfortunately, there wasn't anything around here that could be used to mercy kill the bleeding animal. Only bays of hay and a few dozen lodges. What if... I don't want to do either of these things, you know. Leaving it there just makes it suffer. But... You feel guilty ending the poor guy's suffering. But, if you want to be ultimately merciful, you would end the suffering. I picked up one of the logs. I could help it after all. Oh my gosh, another one. I rose the log above the wall's head and kept landing heavy blows down on it. One after another, until the animal stopped moving completely. Tossing the log aside and wiping blood off my forehead, I looked at the animal and made sure it really dead. Then made to leave a barn to go back to the house. And was Yuppie there? What the heck? Why are those people torture a poor animal like that? That's just monstrous. I hope to get to the bottom of this. I decided to look for Yuppie in the kitchen. The kitchen was a relatively small area compared to the entrance hall. It was like your average kitchen. Just a plain table, some chairs, a stove, and a fridge. Evidently, the residents weren't fond of lavish decors. If something is really, really detailed, then it needs to be greyed out. Like blood-wise, blood and gore. Or maybe they just didn't have the money for them. I glanced the area over again. No sign of Yuppie. Better look somewhere else. 
Oh yeah, since I'm already here, I might as well check what they've got in the fridge. <laughs> Is that our priority right now? <laughs> Just to check the fridge to see if we've got any grub? My curiosity about eating habits of the people who live here got the better of me. If they're even human, considering the things I just saw. I pulled the refrigerator door open. Um, okay, more things to grey out. <laughs> Gosh. Inside were small dismembered corpses. I think this is what Yuppie's been doing. She's the one who's done this. The freezer contains several severed heads. Their eyes were bulging. I thought they were staring right at me. The scene was blood curdling. I closed the fridge with trembling hands and swiftly backed away from it. Yeah, I would as well. What the actual heck was that? Are they seriously eating humans here? I covered my face with my hands, trying to regain my calm. I don't think they're eating them. I think they're just preserving them for some cultic or occultic means. That's just impossible. And I bet that the author of that blue book was one of those that were in the fridge. I guess I found out what they got in the fridge. I can't just let it go. When I find Yuppie, I'll have a word or two of her about what the hell's going on here. If you can find her, that is. A few minutes later, I was back in the entrance hall. I have no stone unturned in this awful house. I couldn't find that little girl anywhere. The only choice I had left is to stay put and wait for somebody to come. Mr. Woodsman! I turned my head towards the voice. It did indeed be on to Yuppie. Yuppie, where in the world did you go? I've been looking for you everywhere. I was just playing with my sisters. Play with your sisters? There's nobody else here. What the hell was happening in this place? Please tell me, Yuppie. I went up to her and put my hands on her shoulders. Her expression turned gloomy and she looked straight in my eyes. Fun things were happening here. Yup, you have a warped sense of the definition fun. But not for us. But do you keep telling me how great it was here? I was lying to you. You wouldn't have agreed to come with me if I told you the truth. What makes you say that? Because nobody has ever helped us yet. Tears came from Yuppie's eyes. Then I'll be the first. I hugged the girl firmly. S -s -s Seriously? You promise? I promise. Complete silence fell over the house for a while. We stood a it, embraced, without uttering a single word. You're staying here then. I couldn't respond because suddenly I felt an intense pain coursing from my entire body. I collapsed on the floor, no clues to what was happening. Exactly! This girl is bad news! She is indeed an urban legend. But what the... You asked about my sisters. Here they are. Um... They look a little bit on the, um, the zombie side of things, if, if I'm not gonna lie. Great. All of a sudden, ghostly silhouettes of children appeared literally out of nowhere surrounding me. They made a whole crowd, about 20 of them at least. They were all clad in torn rags just like Yuppie. Ready to play, mister? The children's tumultuous laughter rang out throughout the house. After a few seconds it picked up in volume and I smelled something burning, it was the house. Apparently this was part of the children's game. I was choking, and the children's laughter changed to an ear-splitting scream of pain, suffering and despair. Why are they doing this? What is, what is the reason behind all of this? My mind refused to try to find an explanation to all of this BS at that moment. I can't take it any longer. My vision gradually darkens. And we woke up. Nope. I was being dragged away. I couldn't see the face of a person dragging me, but instead witnessed sharp tons of fire completely engulfing the evil house as it lived its last moments. I was devoid of any thought in that moment. I felt empty. Absolutely empty. Satu, you alive? Please answer me. What? Is that Nibiria? Are we in hospital? I thought so. Man, that dream was nuts. The things your exhausted brain shows you. And then you keep inadvertently playing them back in your head the next day. And you didn't have to pay for those movies with the time you could have spent dreaming of something nice. 
involuntarily to boot. Right now, however, I do have a choice. I'm so out of this freaking hospital. After last night, I have no burning desire to remain here any longer. <laughs> burning. Not that I had any in the first place. I know it was just a dream, but I just have a feeling I've got to get a move on. A sixth sense, if you will. I'll listen to it. It's the only guide I have right now. Aside from my friends, of course. But they're not here, so it's settled. Okay, I think I've got all my stuff. Good thing I didn't have much to pack, just what the stuff brought for my dorm. The best is I will check just in case I don't have to come back here. What about the note? Let's see here. Slippers, underwear, outerwear. I guess that's it. Good to go. I head outside into the college town after telling the nurse about my early departure. She obviously wasn't too happy about it. I wasn't thwarted though. Not whatsoever. After leaving the premises of the hospital, I began looking for any signs that could lead me to the dorms. Okay folks, I think we're going to leave things off here. Thank you so much for watching. Please check this game out for yourselves. There will be a link down in the description below where you can purchase it on Steam. There's only the prologue at the moment and we'll be back for part 2 of the prologue. I think this game is only an hour long, depending on your reading speed and all that. And obviously because my reading speed is a bit slow, that means this will be longer than the imposed approximate time it takes to complete it. But thank you all so much for watching and see you all in the next time of Torix Secrets. Torix Secrets. Have a lovely day and take care of yourselves.